Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today we're going to talk about ordnance hardpoints, other ship items as well as sizing, sub-items and quality that's all going to be part of the ship matrix update and some of the functionalities even coming out with Alpha 3.0 or at least coming in a 3.x patch as well. So we won't have to wait too long to get all of this actually in our hands and not just in stats form. Ordnance and missiles. So ordnance hardpoints cover the attachment of missiles, torpedoes and rocket pods. Missiles and torpedoes have a size ranging from 1 to 12. Typically the size is the length in meters of the ordnance with the diameter being one tenth of that. So a size 3 missile would be approximately 3 meters in length with a width of 0 0.3 meters. Normally missiles range from sizes 1 to 4 typically though so uh, and torpedoes are normally size 5 and up basically due to the intention of the actual items. So missiles are more agile and better able to track craft, reacquire locks and faster than torpedoes, with torpedoes being slower but packing more punch. Uh, recommended for kind of attacking a larger craft or something that's disabled or something bigger. Although you can use both missiles and torpedoes on any targets you wish with varying levels of success. Both missiles uh, and torpedoes will be affected in atmosphere, with missiles being more susceptible typically to atmospheric changes. Missile and torpedo racks. So missile racks are attached to ordnance hardpoints with the missiles or torpedoes then attaching to them. Various sizes of racks allow for different configurations of missile loadouts to be available. The size of the rack equals the size of the hardpoint um, and the one missile being attached to the hardpoint size. So a size 4 rack would take one size 4 missile example. So if you wanted to get two missiles attached to that size 4 hardpoint, you'd drop down a size of missiles. You could have two size 3 missiles. Again, if you wanted four missiles, you'd drop another size, so two sizes, and you'd have four size 2 missiles with a, that kind of rack. And then you can actually have octo ranks. You can have eight size 1 missiles um, if you wanted, as long as your hardpoint is at least size 4. Some ships like the Constellation have uh, individually bespoke racks as part of their hull as well. They can't be swapped out for other ones typically, although occasionally they will be able to. But yeah, they, they are bespoke. They're not going to be being able to be switched for lots of different types of rack at the very least. Rocket pods. Small unguided missiles are rockets in game and can be fired from rocket pods. Any previously dumb fire missiles have been made have some form of locking and tracking uh, and have become missiles. So the only rocket pod we currently have in game at the moment is the one from the Mustang Delta, which is actually a bespoke one built into its hull. But there will be various sized ones in the future, examples being shown for sizes one to three hardpoints. And also those rocket pods should fit onto ordnance hardpoints as an alternative to missile racks. Other sort of um, ordnance hardpoint uses in the future will be for uh, possibly distortion field generators, which uh, seem to be some form of smaller EMP generator like the Warlock has, um, fuel pods for quantum and afterburner fuel, and even mine pods um, for uh, using mines on land, sea, and space. Cool that they're thinking about sea and water as well as land uses as well for mine launchers. Um, that's pretty cool. Other ship items. So there are utility hardpoints too that can take utility items. They will be able to be swapped around between ships to change their functionality, though some hardpoints will be bespoke or built into the hull or for use for a particular utility items. So you won't be able to swap them out in that case. Uh, while you can swap utility items out, it might not always be as effective as using a dedicated ship uh, design for that cause. So you can swap the Terrapin's radar dish out for a mining laser or a tractor beam if you wanted to allow for basic mining or salvaging but you have no discrete way of processing uh, that. In a situation like that, you'd need a second ship typically uh, to help process things effectively. Another example will actually be uh, ships equipping tractor beams to aid in a mining operation by bringing material closer to an Orion, just so it's a more efficient operation. Uh, other ship items are not mentioned previously in shipyard, but will be shown in the ship matrix and um, information being conveyed about it will be power plants, coolers, shield generators, fuel intakes, radars, quantum drives, jump drives, uh, computers, which were formerly called avionics uh, modules or motherboards, uh, and fuel tanks. Aside from fuel tanks, all of those items are swappable um, to ensure balance and fall under one of five size categories, vehicle, small, medium, large, and capital. Each item point is restricted to a single size and type, meaning you can't put a power plant um, on a cooler hard point, um, nor can you swap two small shield generators out for a medium shield generator. The jump in output between sizes varies, but it's roughly 
considered to be a three to one ratio, where three small items give you roughly the same output as one medium one. There's also item grades as well, so items are graded from A to D, with C being the typical grade for most items in most ships as default. The best possible performance comes from um, an A grade item, and this actually has an additional sub item slot, and we'll talk about sub items in a minute. B, they are a good upgrade to performance, and might have a, a, an additional sub item slot. C, that's the standard for most ships average performance, and D is lower grade, generally making up the NPC and AI populace, good for emergency use or to get through troubles or whatever, or to have as spares. Uh, item classification. So in future 3.x patches, items will also be assigned component classes, uh, and appropriate ships will be able to fit um, items of that class. So there's going to be military, which give the best overall item functionality, but might have more emissions and, and cost a lot more. Civilian will be the most co uh, common and will be sort of like balanced, but not necessarily um, the best at anything or, or great at anything, but will be relatively cheap. Stealth will vastly reduce your signature. This is the idea at the cost of um, functionality or being expensive or something. Uh, industrial will be very reliable, high output and low wear but really high emissions, so it'll be easily detectable. Competition, that's basically going for all out racing, uh, that kind of thing, um, although I suspect we'll see um, dogfighters and stuff possibly with competition thrusters and engines occasionally. Every ship should be able to fit civilian class components and at least one other class, although many ships will be able to fit a lot more, if not all of them. Sub-items, so sub-items are part of other components, so part of a shield generator, part of um, a power generator, uh, and provide a boost but are consumable or at least wear out regularly. So they're not required for that base item to function, but spares can be swapped in and out every time and they do give those boosts. So each sub item fits into one of three categories at the moment, each boosting a different set of stats for an item that it goes into its parent item. Efficiency improves the overall effectiveness of the main item by reducing power or improving calling performance. Uh, protection reduces the damage being dealt to the item by absorbing different types of damage or reducing rare rates or misfire chances. Detection inhibits emissions in various spectrums, uh, basically improving your resistance to scanning or just reducing your IR and EM signature is the idea of that, at least of that item that it's attached to. Sub-items can fit in many different items and are not restricted by a specific type of item. Blades, um, however, are uh, additions at the moment to computers, so what were previously known as those avionics motherboards and modules you can now put blades into if you've got slots now blades add functionality or expand functionality of other systems there's going to be limits to what they can do but they're used for example to make turrets possibly auto fire at an enemy or track and destroy missiles as a point defense system so there's some cool functionality you can do with blades um, including having effectively little ais doing and operating your ships um, automatically remember even with the new stats and ship matrix the items will get tweaked and changed and rebalanced and there's going to be even more items that you'll be able to customize your ship load out to not just those blades that i mentioned sub items all that sort of jazz but also scanners batteries armor as well as possible many more. Now we are looking forward to the SCU and cargo design document for the shipyard um, stat stuff uh, as well as variants and modules. Uh, both will be coming out over the next couple of days. Every month we have a giveaway for October. It's a Constellation Aquila that we're giving away with Urza Rover and P-52 Snubfighter donated by our featured org Stellar Enterprise. If you're looking for an org to join please check out the links below. All you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on one of my Star Citizen videos during that particular month. Do you have any questions about anything we discussed, whether it's about the hard points uh, or about um, Star Citizen's development in general or Alpha 3.0 or Item System 2.0, that all of this is basically used in or for or has been made possible by uh, a special thank you to my Patreons who allow me to create the amount of content I do. If you're interested in becoming one of them, you can find the links to Patreon as well as everything else we've talked about below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help me and I'll see you in the verse.